Vanderbilt's Aerospace Club has liquid fuel management and a ramjet performance, as well as the landing hazard detection. This is going to fly on an L-1395. And it's going to come out with a main at 700. This is on pad 44. And we're going to launch this rocket on pad 44 in 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, start. Beautiful blue flame. There it goes. The, there's the ramjet. Still going. Straight up above. Everybody point at it. It's straight above us. There's an event. And there's something underneath the drogue. Okay, it's straight above us. Point at it because it's still exactly straight above us. It's moving a little bit off east of the flight line, but it's still really close. <laughs> There's two items, both attached by a harness with a parachute in the center. And you can see it like doing a dance in the light up there, a greenish color, white color shoot. Again, it's looking for a main at 700 feet. It's still got a little bit of time here, running through about 1,800. It's going to be real close. We'll get to see it all come out. There's about uh, 1,200. We're looking at a 700-foot main here. It should be a dot now. There it goes. Man, listen to the woots and hoots from Vanderbilt. Awesome. Beautiful shoot. That beautiful sky right across the salt. Awesome. Absolutely fabulous. management system. So we had a small aluminum fuel tank on board with some liquid fuel inside uh, and inside of that fuel tank we had a series of baffles to uh, abate the slosh. Um, after main engine cutoff the fuel wants to slosh around so we want to prevent, uh, prevent that so we can deliver fuel to a ramjet engine. So the ramjet is the second payload on our rocket. Uh, it's four inches in diameter and it has a gas canister design similar to what you see on uh, you know real, real jet engines but minus all the moving blades and, and whatnot. So the fuel delivery system is pressurized at 450 PSI, and so we have an air supply tank on board and, uh, and a solenoid that's controlled a certain time after launch. We open the solenoid, and just after main engine cutoff, we ignite the ramjet and try to sustain combustion for eight seconds. So we have a series of instruments on board that we can collect thrust data and temperature data. So we'll use that data to verify that we indeed, that we indeed did sustain combustion and to uh, validate our slosh abatement system. So, Well, that is really impressive. So the second plume of smoke that we saw was the ignition of your ramjet, is that right? Yeah, that's correct. So uh, just after main engine cutoff, we ignite the ramjet uh, at four seconds after launch, and then at five seconds after launch, we ignite a backup igniter, and that's when we expected uh, ignition to begin. And then we go for about eight seconds after that, uh, and, and then we close the solenoid, and then reach after. Oh, that's fantastic. So were you getting real-time telemetry data that was telling you that it was functioning? What kind of information were you getting in real time? So there's a, uh, a rocket data acquisition system on board uh, that collects all the data. So we'll analyze that post-launch, um, and we'll look and see uh, what exact data we got. So, so you, you were able to get some additional thrust out of that, almost like a second stage? Uh, the thrust is minimal. Uh, one of the requirements is that the thrust does not exceed the drag. Okay. So it's just uh, it's just an experiment to look at combustion, look at combustion efficiency, and validate the fuel system. But you also were trying to hit a target altitude, right? Exactly. So you had to calculate in that effect to get to your altitude, right? That's exactly right. So in addition to the wind effects, uh, and uh, we did have to uh, account for that because it's it is negating the drag a little bit. So. 
Well, how awesome is that, folks? A ramjet on top of a rocket. Congratulations to Vanderbilt. It's awesome. Thank you. Thanks Very a lot. We're, we're, we're proud to be here. So. Over to you.